Good evening, everyone from Belgium. It's Tuesday tea time with Elsa, and I'm here um, after a long drive this morning from the southern part of France, where I just finished up a clinic there. And I wanted to talk today about interest without anxiety. Um, a big shout out to Nina in the UK. Thank you for the peppermint tea that I'm drinking. Um, that was a really nice uh, thing to pull out of my suitcase today and go, oh yeah, I have tea for tea time. Um, and uh, I also want a huge thank you to Florentine who's organized all of my clinics here in Belgium and France. Um, it's been a really fun couple of weeks here. So today, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about how interest or being interested or curious is often very close to anxiety for horses, but also for people with their horses. And this is something that we struggle with in a relationship with our horses is how do we utilize all of the fun and joy and creativity that comes with that curiosity without crossing the line into anxiety or concern? And the way I delineate the difference is when a horse is anxious or concerned, they start only thinking about themselves, not their friends or their partners. So that means that harmony becomes difficult. They either push into you or pull away from you, or they just act in ways where it's really difficult to be with them. And that's how you know they're anxious or concerned. Um, obviously, there's some precursors to that, some things that happen before that. And that's what we study a lot in my clinics. How do you see the precursors to anxiety? And what do you do about that? How do you get ahead of that? How do you build habits of curiosity that can be below that threshold so you have interest or curiosity without anxiety or concern? And I've been really having fun in my clinics exploring this idea. And I think that my students have too. One of the things that's happened in the last three weeks of teaching, I've been in the UK and then Belgium and then France, is I've had some return students in each clinic. And this is really fun for a couple of reasons. But the biggest one that stood out for me is the comparison in my mind of when I met them and how they are now. And the biggest thing that stands out to me is the increase in interest and the decrease in anxiety. And that's really exciting. Now, you might say, maybe that's just the passing of time. Maybe as the years go by, we get more interested and less anxious. Well, yes, that's great. Um, I encourage that, and maybe that's happening whether people come to my clinics or not. Um, I fully admit that, and that's fine, and that's wonderful. What's fun is if I can give you some tools to help you get there a little bit more smoothly, not necessarily faster, but more smoothly, gracefully, confidently. So Annie Oakley says, for the horses or for the people? For both. So, you know, mostly in the clinics, we're talking about the horses. When they get concerned, they're difficult to have harmony with, but it's true for the people too. When people get concerned, they're difficult for the horse to catch. They're difficult for the horse to pull into harmony because they're a little too preoccupied with themselves and their own feelings, and they don't have enough awareness of what the horse is offering. And so as we practice all the things I teach in my clinics, we're practicing the awareness of seeing when your horse is open to more harmony, seeing what kinds of harmony they are open to, seeing if we can stretch the varieties of different kinds of harmony. And 
when we do that, it becomes a bigger percentage of what we experience with the horse. Now, if we lower anxiety, sometimes there's some time when the horse just falls asleep. And that's not the goal, but it is sometimes part of the process. And the goal really is that we increase the curiosity, the interest, the engagement, the desire to do things together. And that's both from the human side and the horse side. So what I noticed in all three of the clinics I've done here in Europe over the last um, couple of weeks and in the UK is that the students who've been doing this for a while are able to access that sort of window, that window between curiosity and concern or between interest and anxiety. And that window is starting to get bigger. And that's exciting. Now, does it mean it's perfect? No. I mean, a lot of the reason that some people come to me is because they have very complicated horses. Um, if your horse is really straightforward and it's responding to whatever training method you throw at it really well, you probably don't have a strong motivator to go try something as new and innovative as freedom-based training. But even with the horses that are a little bit more complicated, maybe they tend towards anxiety, anxiety a little bit more than most, um, to see those horses over a period of years or a year even is really beautiful because they can see that window start to open up between where they can be curious and where they get anxious. And there's a little more room there before they cross that line into anxiety. There's a little bit more room for interacting with the human in a really positive way, not because they're forced to, but because they volunteer to. And that's the real difference, I think, between a lot of training where they're pressured into making changes and freedom-based training where we just try and set up the environment. We set up our responses to them so it becomes more likely that the horse is going to um, interact with us in good ways. So that Oh, Shift is joining us. Hi, Shift. <laughs> um, that interaction in good ways happens between the range of interest and anxiety, hopefully before you get to anxiety. Hi, Shift. <laughs> Hi, Florentine. <laughs> so Florentine's just getting back from feeding the horses. So sometimes people will say, you know, why do you go back to a freedom-based training clinic? Haven't you learned it already? Um, why would you do it again year after year? And one of my students, uh, Victor, thank you, came up with a really good analogy that I just love. And that is that for some people, when you learn to play the game of chess, it's enough to just know which direction each piece moves. And then you can play chess and it's fun. But for other people, you want to learn what are the strategies? How do I do it better? How do I anticipate the other player's moves? How do I put my, place, my pieces on the chessboard in the right place at the right time so that this interaction becomes more and more interesting? And that's why people come back to my clinics. That's why people take my online course for a second time. That's why people want to dive a little deeper. Yeah, it's fun to know how all the pieces move in the game. That's a good start. And for some people, that will be enough. But for other people, they're going to want to know a little bit more. And what I find is the better you get at anticipating what's going to happen next with the horse, the better job you can do about putting yourself in the right place at the right time so that they're more likely to shift to interest and curiosity and less likely to shift to concern. You're not going to force it to happen. You may not even cause it to happen, but you are going to make it more and more likely because of the patterns. So, um, 
Annie says, yeah, that's another good thing to look for in the training. Yeah, absolutely. So we are on this developmental path with the horses. It's very slow because we're just waiting for what the horses offer naturally. We can cause a small amount of change, but if we try and cause too much, that faster growth rate causes some discomfort, which means the horse is gonna walk away. They're gonna opt out of that change if it's too uncomfortable. And so that's why freedom-based training really has to be very slow. But even if the horse is developing very slowly, what I find is my students, the humans, are developing very quickly when they study. Because us humans, we also need to know how to be in the right place at the right time so that we are more likely to be curious of the outcome and less likely to be anxious about what's gonna happen next. And so the horses get to take as much time as they wanna to take to develop. And the humans do too. But because the humans are studying the theory a little bit more directly, what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase your curiosity and your interest. And we're gonna make a bigger window of opportunity between where you're curious and interested and where you get concerned or anxious. And we're gonna do that by helping you experiment, learn your horse's signals, learn how to be in the right place at the right time, and develop patterns where harmony is easy, where that curious and shared interest, that's likely. And this is really exciting for me. I'm so glad that I get to share it with so many people. I'm so glad I get invited around the world to teach it. Um, I'm so glad that I have an online course where I can explore it more deeply. Um, in a clinic, I only have four days, so we can get pretty far, but it's just scratching the surface. When I do my online course, we've got 10 weeks to explore the ideas together. And I'm not the teacher, the horse is the teacher. I'm just the translator. So um, if any of you guys are interested, I have another online course starting the end of June. I still have three spots open. I only take um, 15 new students at a time, so I have time for everybody. So if you're interested, drop me an email and I'll give you the details. If you're in the US, somewhere near Indiana, I'm gonna be there next week. Clinic starts on Friday. I'm really excited to see some people that I have seen in past clinics, see how their evolution is going between that, that window of opportunity between interest and anxiety and how much interest we can generate without crossing that line up into anxiety. And um, I'm sure there'll be some new people there too. So thank you everyone for sharing tea time with me. I hope that's some good food for thought. And uh, I look forward to seeing you down the trail.